Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you are. Today, I've got some amazing tips and tricks that you can use in CapCut to up your game when it comes to your social media. Let's dive in and take a look. First off, I wanna show you how to auto caption your content when you import it into CapCut. All you're going to do is once you've got your timeline ready and it's all been edited for you, you're gonna highlight the clip, you're gonna come over to text, you're gonna come over to auto captions, and then you're gonna choose the language that you want and click create. Now CapCut's gonna go away, do its little thing, it's gonna auto kind of recognize the words that you're talking and you can edit these afterwards as well. So if you do spot a spelling mistake or you want to change the way something looks inside of CapCut, it's really easy to do, let me show you. All you're gonna do is you're gonna come along, you're gonna highlight the bit of text that you want and you can then come in and edit the text or the spelling underneath the basic item here. You do have some other options where you can put them inside bubbles. You've also got all sorts of different effects. So you could use the artifact here or just change the kind of the way that some of these text items look. And you can come down and you can change the scale of this. So you can change them to be bigger. You can change what it all, all looks like. You can add a stroke to them. So if you wanted an outline stroke on there, you want to change the color of the inside one, you can do, you can just come and change the color here. You do have also some preset styles here. So you can just come in and click on those and choose the one and play about with the one that suits your style best. Now, if you do want to add animation to them as they're coming on and off the screen, you can do, just come over to the animation option and you've got all these different animation options. And whilst you've got it selected, it's gonna give you a demonstration of what it actually looks like when it's coming on the screen as you click down. Now, some of these are pro features. I think it's like £9.99 or $10 a month depending on where you're located, if you wanna go through the pro options. But there's so much you can do with the free option of CapCut. Just, I'll put a link to it down below. It's not sponsored, it's not an affiliate link, but just CapCut, for me, when it comes to video editing, has, it's just mind-blowing. Now, the next thing you're probably going to want to do with some of your text is add in there some emojis. Again, it's really easy to do, let me show you. So you're just gonna come in, you're gonna come over to where your text is, and on the Mac keyboard, it's the FN key, and you just type in the FN key, and that's gonna bring up your emojis. There's all sorts of other ways, depending on what keyboard you're using, that you can bring up your emojis. Find out how to do that locally where you are, but on the Mac, I use, an, it's just the FN key, just this key just down here on the keyboard. So if I want to add in, say, a tick, I can just come over, click on the tick there, and that's gonna actually add it into my captions down below. Really easy way to do that. If you want to add in bigger emojis, just separate from the text, you can do that. You can come over to the text, you can click add text, drag the default text on, so you're just gonna drag the default text on. And again, you just edit this in exactly the same way you would with the other text that we were editing a moment ago. So you just come in, press the FN key, and you can choose and um, add in all your emojis that you want to add in there, whatever those emojis might be. <laughs> there we go, I've got a really strange pause face there. But we can just come in and add and move these emojis around the screen as we want to. The next thing that I want to show you is how you can add a progress bar using CapCut. There's two ways that I want to show you on how to do this. One way you're kind of like importing a graphic and number two where you're using some text. Let's dive in and let me show you. Now for this first option I just went into Canva. I just created a template of the screen size that I wanted to whether that's going to be for YouTube like this or whether you want it for social media, short form posts, you can do, and just to add that. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna add in there a rectangle of whatever color it is you want. Just come over, change the color. You can add borders to it if you wanted to. I chose not to add a border to mine. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna come down, download that as a PNG with a transparent background. Now, there is a way to do this without downloading it as a transparent background, but it means trying to crop it and all the rest of it and it's just a little bit easier if you've got Canva Pro, 45 day trial of that down below in the description. But if you've got Canva Pro, transparent background, download that, import that into CapCut. So I'm gonna show you how you do this using the wide progress bar. 
just click and drag that in. I just imported the media just using the import option here. We want this to be the full width of this item here. Now I'm just gonna click mute on this because we don't need the audio. So once we've added the progress bar onto our timeline down here, we're gonna actually add in a couple of what we call keyframes. Now don't get too confused about this. It's really easy to show you how to do these keyframes. We're gonna come over to the basic tab here and first of all, before we actually add the keyframe, what we need to do is need to just click and drag this off to the edge, just so it's just off the screen. Now, just off the screen is exactly where you want it at the beginning of the timeline. All you're gonna do is come over to position, take a note if you've moved it up or down, the Y axis, you'll want to make sure that that stays the same all the way through as that's progressing. But we're gonna click on this little diamond here, and as you hover over it, it's, you see it says add keyframe. We're then gonna drag our position bar here all the way to the end and come in one, because otherwise I can't select it. And then at the end, we're gonna then just drag that so that it is fully on the screen. And you'll see what it's done on the timeline down here is he's actually added another diamond, which is another keyframe. So if we now go back to the beginning of this and click play, we've got a really nice, really simple progress bar that's gonna play across the entire length of your video. The other way you can do this is by using a text box. So we're gonna come over and we're gonna add text. We're gonna just drag the default text on here again. We want that to be the full width. And again, I'm gonna click down to the beginning and we're gonna highlight all of the default text and we're gonna click in and add in a few underscore items here. Now, if you want this to be a thicker item here, all you're gonna do is you're gonna change the actual font size. So for the benefit of this and being able to see it, I'm gonna change it to around about 49. All we need to do now, we've got our line. This is exactly the same as it was beforehand. We've got our line. We're gonna drag that over to the edge just so it's coming onto the screen. We're gonna come over to position. Where is position? Position is this one here. And again, take note this time of the actual Y axis because we need that to be the same at the end. Now, all you're gonna do is gonna click and drag the progress bar to the end. And we're gonna change the position to zero and hit enter. Now, when you click the progress bar, it actually just plays. Now, the benefit of using the text option is you can come along, you can click highlight, and you can actually then just change the color of the progress bar if you want. So we're just gonna click and have that to be one color. So you could change that to be a yellow progress bar, red progress bar, any of these colors you want it to be. Now the next trick I wanna show you is how you can animate on the cinematic bars inside of CapCut. Now I did do a video on this last week inside of Canva. If you wanna check out that video, I'll put a link up here, here, whichever side it is, and also down in the description below. But let's dive in and let me show you how you can do it inside of CapCut so much easier. Now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come over to the media area and to, into the library and we've got this black box. I'm just gonna drag that black box over on top. Now yes, this does just cover the whole of the screen, but what we wanna do is we wanna kind of cut out that section. So all we're going to do now is we're gonna come over to the video section, mask, and we've got this item here called film strip. Now it looks wrong, all we're gonna do is click on the reverse option up here. Now, to start off with, we want them off the screen. So we want them to be here. And you're gonna come over and again, we're using a keyframe. So you click on here up on the keyframe. You're gonna drag your timeline to wherever it is you want those to be on the screen. You're gonna drag them on the screen to however far you want them. And you're gonna click on the keyframe again, and then that's it. That's your animated timeline black bars done. So let me play that back for you. There you go. And if you want to animate them off the screen again, you can just come in, you can choose to add a keyframe here. And let's say you wanted them to be off the screen here. So there you go, you can just click them off the screen. So now when we play that back, they're gonna come on the screen, they're gonna stay on, and then they're gonna come off. 
Now the next feature that I want to show you is going to save you so much time if you're used to filming in formats like YouTube for like this and then wanted to reframe for vertical. Inside of CapCut they make it so easy it's unbelievable. Now let's say we wanted to resize this for a different video. All you're going to do is down here you'll see it says 16 by 9. You're going to click on that and then you can change that to be 9 by 16. All you need to do is just reframe and redrag your image over to make sure it covers up the frame for you. And then that's it. That's that's it going from horizontal format to vertical format in a matter of moments. Now there is a lot more to CapCut and there's a lot more that you can do inside of CapCut. It, you've even got like a library of different animations, little bleep areas, a little cutouts, New Year's celebrations. You've got some built-in audio options. Now I prefer Epidemic Sound. I'll put a link down below to Epidemic Sound. I always use Epidemic Sound because then I know what music and where it's come from and whether I've got the rights to use it on the platform that I'm actually posting the content to. And it's the same, especially when it comes to doing client work. The last thing you want to do is have your client actually have a copyright strike or anything else like that so do make sure you check out epidemic sound down below i do highly recommend them especially if you're doing client work now the next item in here is the text box there's all sorts of default text but there's also text examples and then there's auto captions that we saw before and you can actually import your captions as well if you've used a separate program to create an SRT file. One thing I do want to say when you're doing the auto captions in here, if you wanted to export an SRT file, all you do is you come up to file, export, and then this is your export options. And you can see you've got caption exporting and that's a pro only feature. Next, you've got all sorts of stickers and things like that you can add. You've got all sorts of effects. And you'll see all these sorts of things trending on things, especially like TikTok. It is ByteDance that own TikTok, also own CapCut. So you'll see a lot of the trends and the ways you can edit the video. I'm using the desktop version. There's an iPad and the phone version as well. All different features do appear on different versions, but I tend to edit most of my videos on the desktop. You've then got all sorts of different transitions that you can have, all sorts of like glitches, ghost stripes and strobes. You've got all sorts of different filters that you can add to your videos and then you can even do custom lookup tables which is a way of grading the color of things like that of your videos if you wanted to do that sort of thing next we've got the right hand panel over here and you've got the basic panel where you can change the position you can align sort everything you've got all sorts of different blend options you can stabilize things so if you've got a little bit of shaky footage you could come in and try the stabilization option you can enhance noise reduction and remove video flickers if you've got CapCut Pro. Next you've got all sorts of audio options you can fade in fade out you can add in voice effects and all that side of things. So the next thing you've got over here is you can change the speed of your clip you can speed it up speed it down but if you wanted to do a speed ramp or something like that you can click on the curve option and you can choose to do that you've got the bullet option jump cut and you can once you've actually applied one of these you'll see the areas here and all you do is you just drag these out and move these around to be more kind of like the speed that you want them to be around have a play about with those you've got all sorts of different animation options the next option is tracking and this is a really fun one to play about with let's say i wanted to track some text to my hand a bit like this I could do and that's all done inside of tracking if that's a video you'd like to see more on let me know down in the comments below and then the last one is adjust and this is where you can change the colors and that side of things but that's all for today I think that's been quite a thorough way of how I'm using CapCut in my workflow on a day-to-day -day basis whether that's creating reels Instagrams shorts or even on YouTube videos I'm starting to use CapCut now to edit my YouTube videos so thank you very much and let me know if you've got any questions on how to do anything inside of CapCut. And until next time, thank you very much and bye for now.